Hey guys, this is Recon. Welcome to my first class guide for Vanguard. Before I start, I want to give credits to Mr. Zhao. He's a really great tank in Revelation and wrote a guide about the arcane arts. I used his guide as a source for some parts of my video. Also big thanks to Woolschan, who was supporting me during the time I was working on that guide and also helping me with some of the recordings. Before I go any further into this guide, I want to let you know a few things. The skill descriptions were not completely translated. So instead of using my own panels for the skill descriptions, I was using screenshots of a skill planner with translations for the Chinese version. I added a link to the planner in the video description below. Probably I will update this guide or even upload a completely new one in future. In this video, I will guide you through several points, just like stats, skills and basics you need to know if you want to play Vanguard. Let's get into this. First of all, I would recommend using the action mode if you play a Vanguard. But of course, you can select the mode you personally feel most comfortable with. Let's go on with the status points. There's a few things you need to know about your stat points. You will have two main stats and one substat, which will be Physic and Spirit as a main and Strength as sub. You will ignore all the other stats. Stat points grant you additional bonuses. As example, for each point on Strength, you will get one additional physical damage and four additional force for every 10 points on Strength. For the leveling phase, I would recommend you to put around about 50 points into Strength so you won't have issues with building enough aggro in team dungeons and also you will have some decent DPS. But in terms of DPS, please keep in mind that you're still a tank. Since Physic and Spirit will be our main stats, we will try to keep them as high as needed. As you can see here, Physic will grant you 29 additional HP and 8 physical defense every single point. And to be honest, we all want to have high HP and defense, right? Also it will add 4 Prawn every 10 points. Spirit will give us a bonus of 25 HP, 10 mana and 8 magic defense every single point, which is really nice. Also it will give us 1 point in HP recovery and 4 Arcana for every 10 points we put into Spirit. So definitely a stat point that we want to have, especially to increase our magic defense. So in general. As a real tank, we will focus on spirit and physic. Don't bother too much about DPS. Please don't get me wrong, but if you want to be a DPS, you better choose a different class. My recommendation on stats is putting stats on following ratio. For every 4 stat points on spirit, you put 3 stat points on physic and 1 point on strength. Probably you wonder why I put higher priority on spirit. That's pretty easy. Later on your gear will support your physical defense and physic more than magic defense or spirit. So you want to compensate that by having tons of spirit. Also, please try to figure out your own stat build, because it's also affected a lot by your gear. I don't want to recommend any final build in this guide. Next point on our list will be the skill points. I will show you the skill animations and explain some skill effects but I won't explain every skill in detail. Therefore I added the skill descriptions. Let's start with Heroic Strike. This skill point is our basic attack on the left mouse button. Next is Tornado Sweep, which is a really important skill for us. It will be on the right mouse button. Conqueror Sweep is a skill with two stages. This skill is also very important for us. We want to use it as often as possible. First stage is a knockdown and we will literally use it in every rotation. Broken Array is a knockback skill, but it won't be interesting before hitting level 49 and unlocking the arcane arts. Later on, I will explain you why. Crippling Bolt is a dot skill and also part of our rotation. Bennett Nash is the most important skill for us. It is our stand switch. In defense mode, it will buff our defense as well as we will generate 50% more aggro. 
but it will also slow down our walk speed. I will explain more about this later on. Dragon Crib is a single pull and also an interrupt, so use it wisely. For example, to pull an outstanding mob or to interrupt casting enemies. Light Shield does have two stages, just like Conqueror Sweep. First stage will cast a damage absorbing shield on us and the second stage will cause damage to the enemy. Either you release the skill by activating it a second time or you wait till the skill activates itself. Vanguard's Blessing is a buff skill and in my opinion very important. It will grant us and our teammates additional HP for 600 seconds. Wormweed is our CC break. This is our last chance reset. It will remove all CCs from us. For example, if you get knocked down, you will be able to escape that knockdown status and flee from that spot. No fear is a buff skill. This buff will give us additional defense and strength. Combo skills. On the NA version you will get your first combo skill by doing the experience quest. To get other combo skills, you will have to buy them at certain NPCs, for example in a mortal annex. There's two types of combo skills, Heaven's Ref and God's Blessing. Our Heaven's Ref skills are Sundering Steel, which is a range attack, Relentless Hurricane, which is simply a 30 second spin to win skill, Blazing Charge is a long range charge skill and Smite which is a huge AOE and also a knockdown skill. Our God's Blessing skills are Lightning Blast which is an AOE knockdown, Holy Vortex is a mass pull that will be very important for us and also it will daze the enemy. Indomitable Will is an AOE taunt. I don't really use it often. Instead I would recommend using Shield Storm, which is a great defense skill. There's also three passive skills, but I need to be honest, I can't tell much about those yet. I only unlocked one so far and didn't figure out how to get the others, since the description is in Chinese. The first passive is Body Strengthening, which will grant us 60 additional HP for every 10 strength, physic, spirit, intelligence or agility. I'm not sure about the other two skills yet, but I added the skill effects so you can see what they will grant us as soon as you unlock them. Last but not least, we will have some aerial skills, which we can use while flying. Those are for aerial combats. The first two skills you will get by doing the experience quest. You can also buy aerial skills at this NPC in Shulan City. In total, there are 6 aerial skills available at the moment. The Heroic Strike, the Sundering Steel, the Conqueror Sweep, Dragon Crypt, Holy Vortex and Wormweed. They have slightly different effects than the original skills. So far so good. Since we know our skills, we can talk about Arcane Arts, which is pretty much customizing the effects on our skills. On level 49, we will be able to use 10 additional Arcane Art points. To unlock the Arcane Arts, you need to unlock the third path. You will find your path in the second tab of your character overview, which you can open by pressing the C button. You will unlock your path by doing the experience quests. As soon as you unlock the Arcane Arts, you will be able to set up your personal and unique skill set. Let me show you an example for that. I will take our stand skill Bennett Nash as example, because I personally find that using 3 arcane points on this skill is very important. Setting one point in the Protect Venderer skill, which is the first skill from the left side on the bottom, will lower your walk speed reduction from 50 to 30%. Using 2 points on that will lower the reduction to 15% and setting 3 points on that skill will completely take off the walk speed reduction. So you will have 100% walk speed in stance mode. Which is just awesome and a must have in my opinion. I don't want to recommend any specific skill build for your arcane points or the skill levels. Every player is unique 
Likewise, I would recommend you to choose and set your skills depending on your own opinion and experience. Rotations Before I show you an example rotation, there's one thing you should know about the skill Conqueror Sweep. The second stage of the skill has a pretty long animation, but just really decent DPS output. So we want to cancel this animation to increase our DPS. You can simply cancel stage 2 by pressing the spacebar to jump. That's it. So let's take a look at our example rotation. A basic rotation can look like this. Combo skill, tornado sweep, broken array, sundering steel, conqueror sweep stage 1 and 2, cancel stage 2 by jumping, tornado sweep, dragon crit, if needed heroic strike as filler, and loop. You can use this rotation for PvE and PvP and adjust it by your own choice. For PvP there's a few things I would recommend. Save your blazing charge to either flee from the enemy or in the worst case to get enemies of your healer. As tank I always recommend to keep an eye on your healer. This is really important, because if your healer dies, you will be dead too for at least 90% of the time. So take care of your lifesaver. Use your heroic leap to charge towards enemies, it will also knock him down, which will give you time to use first skills after charging, for example Holy Vortex in mass PvP. Use Holy Vortex wisely, it has a moderate cooldown and you don't want to waste it, especially in bigger battles. Be careful with the usage of Wormweed. I would recommend using it as a last chance reset, just like Shieldstorm. Those skills will save your life if you time them right. Let's talk about aggro. Most important for building aggro is a working rotation and the usage of aggro skills. Make sure that you activate your defense stance to accumulate enough aggro. Use high DPS skills, which means Use as many combo skills as possible. At this point I will exclude our spin to win skill for building aggro because the DPS is too low. Use the Holy Vortex AoE which has high DPS in short cast time to taunt surrounding mobs for example in dungeons. And that's pretty much it. In short, the higher the DPS, the higher the accumulated aggro. Also you should think about setting arcane points into dragon crypt to build additional aggro with that skill. I hope I didn't miss anything real important. If you like this video and want to see more of my content, please support me by smashing the subscribe button. And as usual, if you have any suggestions, questions or just want to discuss about this video, feel free to do so in the comment section below. Hopefully see you soon guys and thanks for watching.